San Antonio is Military City USA, and we benefit every day from the impact that local bases have on our economy. A recent study from the Texas Comptroller's Office estimates Joint Base San Antonio, made up of Fort Sam Houston, Lackland Air Force Base, and Randolph Air Force Base, generate an estimated economic impact of $39 billion in 2021. Major General Juan Ayala is the Director of Military and Veteran Affairs for the city. And I'd like to start the conversation, General, by asking you how our military missions came through the pandemic, uh, whether they were impacted in any appreciable way, and where we stand going forward. Well, the military missions uh, were not really impacted. Uh, the military missions continued uh, throughout the pandemic. As a matter of fact, we cooperated and partnered very strongly in, with the military uh, because about 85% of those that are in uniform don't live on base, they live off base. So COVID, the, you know, the virus does not have a fence line. And so we cooperated, we talked every day with them, as a matter of fact, and we cooperated on uh, protocols because the protocols for the Department of Defense were different than the ones uh, in the city. So we cooperated with them. And when the vaccines uh, came around and when the testing was being done, uh, we did it in conjunction with the military. So we spoke every day. And as far as the military missions, they continued, and, uh, and which I think is important. We have critical missions that can't afford to yes, sir. be on the back burner for any appreciable time. Yeah, we have missions that are essential to national defense here. Yeah. Uh, as you well know, we have some unique missions here that are only done here in San Antonio. Let's talk about those missions and going forward. Randolph Air Force Base, headquarters of Air Training Command, in good shape, in your opinion? Yeah, they are, they're in great shape. Uh, Air Education and Training Command there, the Air Force's personnel office, we have some training wings there, and they, uh, they are the Air Force's training uh, wing for uh, fighter pilots, for new pilots, and as a matter of fact, uh, they're in very good shape, and I think we're gonna keep them for a while. They're, uh, some of their aged aircraft for training are being uh, replaced by mm -hmm. new aircraft here pretty soon. And Lackland Air Force Base is the headquarters of all basic training, every basic training coming into the Air Force, unlike the other services that have multiple basic training facilities, Air Force has one, it's Lackland. Right. It's a ba uh, basic military training is there at Lackland. And uh, during the, the pandemic, uh, they had to take some folks out but the, the, to Mississippi for the training, and that was the only pause. Uh, but they're back here. And uh, not only do they train all our Air Force recruits, but they also train our new Space Force recruits. And our officer training as well? There, there is some officer training there. Uh, we have several schools there that are Department of Defense schools, the canines, the uh, working, uh, working dogs. Uh, are there and our security police also train there. And also we have a special warfare wing, which we advocated for very hard. This is the cybersecurity? It's, uh, it's not cybersecurity, but they train uh, the warfare wing is for special missions. Uh, oh, I see. Do we also have cyber? We have, yes, we have the, the, the Air Force here has their main uh, base here or their main headquarters uh, for cybersecurity. And uh, is that they're part here of Lackland? Lackland? They're part of Lackland, okay. yes. Got it. And then of course there's Fort Sam Houston, which is headquarters of? Yes, it's Army South and Army North, right. which are both the land components to the combatant commander for the defense of the Western Hemisphere. So if mm -hmm. you look at the Western Hemisphere and the Army's participation in it, the Army's uh, role is, the, it's here. It's and then the Fort other Sam massive Houston. role at Fort Sam Houston is medicine, which used to be Army medicine, right. but it's moving more and more toward all of the services right. having their primary training for doctors and medics yes. here. Yes, so we have a jewel here, and the jewel is Brook Army Medical Center, which is the only uh, level one trauma center, which is for the most complex types of traumas, gunshots, car wrecks, which are uh, battlefield type of wounds. Right. And so we train those uh, medical professionals, medical teams here. And also serve people who've been wounded servicemen who've been wounded in combat yes. in other parts of the world are brought here. Yes. Burn, burn victims and... We have a 40 bed burn victim, uh, burn uh, unit here that uh, does that. And we have to also remember the cooperation with the community that, that we have here. 85% of those level one trauma patients are not Department of Defense, they're not military, they're civilians from the community that have nothing to do with the military. Now in your job, uh, are you also working with the people who decide to retire here? So we have a reputation for a, being a great place to retire, uh, and many do. 
Yes. And they find their way into our economy, including the medical personnel who are helping create our biosciences sector yes. here. Do you work with that dynamic? Yes, we work and support very much our transitioning veterans. And uh, what we do here is we have a couple of programs. The city of San Antonio has invested uh, four years worth of funding for spouse employment. Spouses, mm -hmm. uh, families make decisions on whether they retire, whether they re-enlist or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we work with that. We also have pre-K for SA, which has a priority for military members. Mm. We, all have, we have several programs. Uh, we also have a commission on veterans affairs, yeah. which uh, we have every member of our council uh, has a veteran representative that advises that council member and the mayor on issues of common concern. Are we still a preferred destination, a uh, favorable destination for people leaving, separating from, from the military service? I, uh, in my opinion, absolutely yes. It's, yeah. it's not only the cost of living, but it's also the, the you know, some of the acts, some of the things that our uh, government here in Texas has done to facilitate transferring students from uh, from other locations, uh, also the portability of licenses for spouses that that come here from other places mm -hmm. uh, and that have that want to work. So it's, I think it's a very important family uh, oriented. Uh, and of course, we here. have a large veteran sector, active we veteran sector with the Veterans Hospital here. Yes. Talk about that for just a minute, their contribution in the community. Well, the, besides the, the, the impact, their economic impact, we have uh, several, uh, about 100,000 or more retirees, which that's a paycheck. And we also have, uh, many, many of them uh, are working not only uh, throughout the community, but I'll give you an example. The city of San Antonio has 1,300 veterans that work for the city of San Antonio. So not only did they contribute and yeah. give back to their country, now they're giving back to their community. And they bring uh, leadership training and they bring uh, experience, uh, can-do experience, right. much like you have. Thank you for your service to our country, uh, General Officer, uh, and then all of the functions you've fulfilled in San Antonio since your retirement. This is a unique job that you hold. Not every city has a right. person in this position, but it's appropriate for San Antonio to do it. We're fortunate to have someone of your background and skill. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Supported by Texas Mutual Insurance Company.